Come, come, Gary, Gary. Come, come, Gary, Gary on the kick drum. Come, come, Gary, Gary on the kick drum. Come, come. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to our stupid ray. Let's try that again. Hey, welcome back to our stupid rags to It's of course. I'm Vince Vaughn. And you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Juicy Contents. So, thanks for being so much. Check out when you vote on the squad. Also, of course, YouTube channel links in the description below. Today, we're reacting to a little interview. This is Amir Khan offers his honest reaction to Slumdog Millionaire. Oh! Which we've actually never, I, we've obviously seen um, Indians, um, their views on that film. Yeah. Um, but oh, I don't think we've heard any celebrities, especially of Amir Khan's stature, talk about that film. Not at all. But and it's, it's been a while since we've heard from him. Yeah. Uh, but we, when, was, when was the last time you saw Slumdog? Long time ago. Me too. I'd like to see it now. But here's the thing. And measure it based on what we understand yeah. at this point. It, it will be interesting. Right? Um, I... I believe, from what I've heard, it's. They, I think they all think that it's a good film. They just didn't. They don't like. The, they didn't appreciate like growing up in India, depicting that to the world. Like, right, as the stereotype. Which, because if agree. you ask any American, that's probably what they think of India. Yes, is that it's all slum. So I get it. I get it. But I do remember it being overall quality of film. It was a good one. I I remember when the yeah. movie came out. I wanted it to win Best Picture. Yeah. And I loved that song. I've talked about downloading it. I felt it was an Oscar-worthy film that was yeah. very different, unlike other things. So when Slumdog won, I was celebrating it, but knew nothing about no. India. But obviously we get it. Yeah. We totally get, uh, like, like it, would, like, it would be interesting now to actually watch it. Yeah, I'd like and, to. And, and see what our perception of it is, if it's changed at all. Mm. Um, I don't know if, it, if it'll change, like... Quality of film wise, no. But we we'll probably feel like the stupid babies do. Yeah, we'll say it's a very well made film, but yeah. there's things in it that we have except we take exception yeah. to the stereotypes. Probably. Yeah. Um. But yeah, this will be interesting. Cool. Also, next Amir Khan film. We need it. I I would like. We it's been so I think over a year you. since it, uh, we've seen the lovely yeah. Amir Khan. And for those of you who, within the past year and a half, are new to the stupid family and didn't go all the way back, uh. <clears throat> The very first film we watched at home all the way through was Three Idiots. Mm -hmm. uh, first film we saw in theaters was Gully Boy. Gully Boy. And uh, those were the first two films we saw back to back. And mm -hmm. then the first no, actor... Those weren't the two films we saw back to back. It wasn't? No. We, it was, we were a couple of American films in. Um, and I think we saw Uri and KGF. Before Gully Boy? Are you sure? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. oh, Gully Boy came out in February. First thing we saw in theater was Gully Boy, but but it didn't come out until you're right until yeah. February. But anyway, we saw some of our first films were Three Idiots, PK. PK we yeah. were on a Amir Khan kind of. So tear we need to get back to him. Let us know. I know Secret Superstar is a big one. Talash, I believe, is another big one. I know he has a bunch of old ones as well. So yeah, here we go. Yeah, you're changing the story. As far as in film in India, changing. Uh, Imagine in 10 years it's going to be even bigger because when was it for the longest time? And I mean, Bollywood is always synonymous with musicals, so not all musicals, old, but it, it plays a big role. Um, but they're always about hope, mm. there's always this idea of hope. And then, and, 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 and French cinema and American cinema really changed when it was no longer about hope, that's right, about despair. That's right. Well, I think you know, it's, it's a country which is strange because I mean, uh, for example, a lot of people like me, and there's a huge population of us who have grown up in big cities like Mumbai and Chennai and Delhi and Calcutta, our entire education is in English. So English becomes our first language and we think in English. And for many, English is the only language. Uh, yes, that is also true. Uh, but what happens is for someone like me, I have strong influences on me, which are Indian. And then I also have strong influences on me, which, which are from all over the world, because all my reading is in English. I haven't read a single book in Hindi. Hmm. So I've read authors. I mean, when I was a kid, I was reading Indian Brighton. So, you know, right from, from a small age, you have influences which are so diverse. So someone like me, by the time I'm 18 or so, uh, and I'm getting into a, a field which is cinema, there are so many influences on me, and I'm not purely Indian in that sense. You know, I'm, and so there are a lot of people like me who, who are 
um, you know, who have grown up with a lot of influences on, on them. And so what we come out with is not necessarily purely Indian, sure. if you know what I mean. What did you think then? Because for a lot of people, um, I was I was lucky enough to grow up in a neighborhood that was very diverse and there was a, there was a large uh, Indian and Pakistani population. And there are those places in Canada, but for many people, their understanding of Indian culture is Slumdog Millionaire. <laughs> and that really, what, what did you think of that? Yeah. Well, I, I thought the film, uh, I can see why it did well. I can see why it really connected with people. And I'm, you know, I'm a big fan of Danny and, and I was so happy for him and his entire team that the film did so well. Uh, I think for someone like me who, who has lived all his life in, in India, it, it, it didn't ring true on a lot of levels. Hmm. You know, the fact is that I have strong points of reference. Being an Indian, I have strong points of reference. So when cops in the police station speak in English, it doesn't seem correct to me. Or when the slum kid speaks in English, mm. oh, and in yeah, the British it, accent. It was all, that yeah. would probably yeah. be weird. And a British accent? Yeah. Yeah, that would probably be weird to me. But, but I can 15 see... years ago, maybe yeah. that would have happened, right? The British accent. <laughs> so so I think that, you know, unfortunately, you know, for a film like Slumdog, and it, because it's not really a, a, an Indian point of view, I think Danny is someone who's not Indian and, and that's his take and I, I think he's hugely talented but it's not really how India is you know unfortunately I have a strong sure. reference point so I, I can't help but react that way but I can see why uh, people who don't have a reference point love the film oh yeah. no, wish, wow. I, wish I would have gone on uh, and, I, and I wouldn't even say he was being kind and, yeah. and humble but I, I don't say unfortunately his reference point is Indian. I think that's the very strength that mm -hmm. he and other Indians would have about Slumdog. Yeah, and I did. It totally didn't come to my mind, but it would totally make sense because now it even bothers me when I see because I think that new Priyanka film, which uh, White Tiger, which we haven't seen, of course. Uh, and I've heard I'm hearing great yeah, things he, about White he, Tiger. Hearing good things, but um, when I saw a bunch of people in India that were just speaking English. It rang, and I know why they're doing it, obviously. She's wanting a much broader, yeah, and that's why they, Slumdog also did it. I get it. But it, even now, being in this for over two years, it is a little strange to me. Yeah. And it's like, to just, even, not to just hear Indians speak English, but to hear them just speak plain English. Yeah. And, all the time. And I know part of that is because they're still in... And British and, accent would be pretty yeah, weird. Yeah, it'd be pretty weird. <laughs> and I think, because there's still, in every country in the world, there is a massive resistance to watch subtitled films. Yeah. And I, I, don't, I don't understand. Yeah. Uh, we've become so acclimated, we being me and Ashley, Alexis, and Micah, we leave subtitles on even on an English show. My, my subs are always, always on. on. I have to remember to turn them off. I'm like... And what, we just always have the English subtitles on. Yeah. We're just so used to seeing them down there that it doesn't bother us. And I much... Even before OSR, if I had the rare occasion to see, because we did for Oscars, when you mm -hmm. saw a film that was international, mm -hmm. I, I was never bothered by and have always wanted no. subtitles instead of dubbing. For the last 10 years, I usually always tried to see, because here in LA, we're, we're very fortunate because obviously we're a big industry. Um, they always release all the foreign short films in theaters. In theaters. And so you, they would show all five that were nominated back to back. Right. Uh, and you just pay your ticket and you get to see every single one of them. Um, and it, I always loved it yeah. because it's always, it was always so good. And so it's, it's unfortunate, but I wish people would just get <clears throat> even making film. That's Priyanka. And I commend her for trying to blend the two. And yeah, obviously you can't just change people overnight, sadly, no. but it is, I, I just wish they would just force people like, just put well, subs down there. And, and and let me tell you, it happens everywhere. And the thing I'm thinking about, which was for me like the quintessential example, is how many times has Hollywood given us a depiction of the life of Jesus? And it's a blonde-haired, <laughs> blue-eyed Englishman. Verily well, I say unto thee. Yes, Jesus was white and English, wasn't he? Ask not what your country can do for you. That he, was John F. Kennedy. He wasn't born in the Middle East, right? Not at all. He, he wasn't a Jew. He was born in London. Absolutely. <laughs> he, he was 100% looked just like Sir Lawrence Olivier. No, I'm pretty sure he looked like David Stotzenberger. Yeah. <laughs> he was a Jew. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's happened like... Uh, that's one of the things probably that blew my like, mind. Probably more like Harrell. Watch, yeah, watching uh, Les Mis, I'm mm -hmm. like... 
aren't we in France? <laughs> Everybody's got an English accent. Why? <laughs> Which I understand why the British would do that to the French. I understand that completely, but if we're looking for historical accuracy, yeah. Anyway, yeah. I, I'm very at some point, probably this year. I don't know. I, I absolutely sit down and watch it. I absolutely want to watch Slumdog again with the new new perspective. That yeah, I think it would be a very Quan. We could see your, your phone, lovely your phone. Yeah, uh, which is always nice. And and a bunch of other people we know. Yeah, now. Anil Kapoor yep. was in there. And he I was bet, a major role. I in bet that. there's a bunch of other people that we would recognize now. Yep. And obviously get to hear Air Roman, yeah. uh, his song again. But yeah, that's that's very interesting. It would be really interesting to see my perspective on it now. We should do that. M remember, we watched Life of Pi, because you hadn't seen it after Irfan had passed. Yeah, but... we, we should probably watch Slumdog at some point when it's serendipitously available to do. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let us know what your thoughts on Slumdog are uh, and, and the whole the whole take. Uh, also, Amir Khan, if you're watching. <laughs> Come on the channel. I know you watch a lot of reactor channels. I know you do. We love you. <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't even have social media. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <Don't bother children. laughs>